Welcome back to Black Girl Couch Reviews. I'm your host, Christina. We are back for another recap and review this one of The Passage, Season 1, Episode 8. You are not that girl anymore. Amy, no, you're not. <laughs> but I think that was more referencing Babcock this episode. This was not my, I thought last week was not my favorite. This was totally not my favorite episode, which sucks. This is like the penultimate episode because the season finale, I believe, is next week and they are making it a two hour episode. So nine and 10 are going to be together. I don't know what that means for season two of this show. I think it stayed relatively close in the ratings. Actually, I didn't even, let me pull that shit up right now while I'm playing. Because <laughs> I didn't get the ratings for this episode. I gave it a 7.9 out of a 10. It was just okay, but I'm not going to lie. A lot of the stuff we were rehashing that we already knew, especially the Babcock fucking Richard stuff. Oh, y'all just going to hear me complain about that most of this entire episode. <laughs> But I, I, I guess I'm supposed to like where we left off with that. But I thought we were going to get a lot more. And I know I said that last episode, I need Richard's perspective. However, I didn't expect it to be so atypical. I thought it was going to be just a little bit different. They were giving me a little bit more credit than that. But no, they totally, um, totally and utterly, basically, it was like, mm, this is what it is. Actually, no, I don't have the the ratings for last week's episode because they haven't posted yet. So I'm guessing since uh, the trend has been close to about a 20% drop off, it's probably around the 3 million mark. And if the season finale ends around two, I can solely see Fox canceling it. <laughs> I just don't see them giving it more I don't see them promoting it I don't see them you know when even shows like FBI right like I'm subscribed to them and they come out with little sayings and things I feel like Fox when it comes to an African-American type show where they're the main characters or they're part of the main cast they just don't do a lot they're like it's there to say we did it but at the same time they don't spend as much time as say you know probably promoting 9021 fucking O, especially after the death of luke perry unfortunately but this is how hollywood works and there's shit for it and the fact that this show has a lot of good elements and then they have a lot of shitty elements that honestly could be straightened up with i don't know just a little bit of caring then it really bothers me because the actor actress playing amy bella fonte is tight uh, some of the character work is is very good the characters are all in their own way likable and you can get down with what's going on I mean we we're only getting to the apocalypse right now and that sucks because that's what this show was right it's been 10 episodes leading up to an event versus if you're going to do this type of show we they don't want to see the the if you're doing flashbacks especially you don't need all this damn groundwork. And I'm really disappointed that we're really only covering, hey, Amy gets captured and guess what? This is what's gonna happen. I don't, it's not that type of genre that you bring people in on like that. Uh uh. You're not gonna get the fan base because there's not a lot of action, there's a lot of setup. And that's what this season has been. I've enjoyed it for the most part. Actually, I've enjoyed it quite a bit. But mostly it's been to get to this conclusion that now I'm really shitty about because if it doesn't get a season two, I will never get to see the rest of it. And it's unfortunate. And I don't even think they have the numbers to even ship it to or even the fandom really to ship it to like Netflix or Prime. And it sucks because you almost wish a show like this had started on Netflix or Prime or Hulu or whatever, because given time, it totally can uh bring viewers in especially once they actually had gotten into the apocalypse part and it's just a whole bunch of unfortunate so I'm sad about that <laughs> and the fact that you know the penultimate episode really other than maybe one or two big scenes had any effect going forward on what we've seen thus far and then some of it even the scenes that I was like oh okay really we're doing this 
But before we even go too down far the rabbit hole, uh, this episode was directed by T. West, who worked on The Innkeepers and House of the Devil. And it was written by Peter Elkoff and C.A. Johnson. I didn't see anything for them, so that might explain why. Why would you give your penultimate episode to someone that, like, I feel like people who write the pilots and get the show off the ground, that they should be the closers, right? Because if you can at least sell the last three episodes and you just have a middling, you know, middle of the season, then you have a better chance of renewal. And I feel like they just didn't even, they didn't even try. So into some news and gossip, they are finally gonna give Daryl Dixon, who anyone who's still interested in The Walking Dead, I just kind of pick up on things going on in The Walking Dead and I wait for it to come on uh, Netflix because I have no interest watching it live. There's been a compl- lot of complaints about Michonne's character as far as why is everyone turning against her, blah, blah, blah. I know that comics, this would have been fucking Rick's story. <laughs> like, I ain't even mad at people was mad at this. They're like, you would have been the same bit of mad uh, when this was happening to Rick. Probably even more so because you knew his character a lot more and then to just thrust Michonne in that without really giving her any type of perspective after this time jump and it's dragging out irrationally long giving anyone perspective because they know that's a fan favorite character and it's the reason why a lot of people are still watching and they know that they need people to view until the end of the season so why not put a whole focus episode on her in the second half right before the fucking finale assholes oh they know what they're doing but that's why i won't give them my viewership no i'm just gonna go online and uh read an article on what the fuck happened So fuck you, Walking Dead. Sorry. (laughs) I got really mad because I hate their cheap ass tricks. That's why most of the fandom fucking fell off anyway. They got shit. They got passage numbers (laughs) right now because fans have just, it's not even like, yeah, they've had shitty writing over the years. Yeah, they've had, uh, you know, irrational storytelling over the years. But I think where everyone really just got like two through was then when you tried to play me like a fucking fool like no you know and then do it fucking three times twice in the same damn season and then when you come back you just give a whole bunch of mm, oh i can go on a rant about the walking dead and why i stopped watching after season six <laughs> because i got really upset with not you know i was used to where they've been doing with the damn storylines that's old what where y'all messed up was when you actually tried to look at the fandom and play them like a damn idiot and then try to justify your own fucking actions anyway so in case you're interested in that show still the deaf chick apparently he came out thinking that they're going to be a love interest so now forbes and a lot of other people are peddling the story around they're trying to make the next show because they want to try to keep that fandom there and some kind of see it for what it is and then also daryl dixon wanted michonne as his love interest that let's not get that twisted so he probably was like, shit, if y'all keeping me one, give me a woman that's not Carol. Because <laughs> everyone is holding on that shit for dear life. And you know this new ship is just going to be fucked on. Or, uh, you know, everyone's going to hate it. Especially the Carol fans. They're like, no. Despite the fact that she's totally in love and married to another man. But you know how some people just can't let it go. And don't even come at me because, you know, what about Jesse? No, they was literally the stupidest thing you ever saw. There was nothing ever concrete between them nothing absolutely nothing carol has moved on has been single he ain't been sitting out there waiting he ain't had no, there's no competition for daryl dixon there was a there was a clear shot for carol and she ch- almost wanted to fuck morgan and totally fucked um oh boy as soon as he rolled up on he she's not interested she loves that man yes she does that's her best friend but she's not in love with him not like that And I don't care what y'all talking about. You ain't just going to wake up one day and change your mind. Yes, you can, but not after this fucking time. (laughs) She got a whole other kid with the other man. Y'all need to go. And I feel sorry for it. Because, you know, hey, I get it. I got ships that don't work out either. I totally get it. I'm still mad about uh, why other people make more sense. So I'm, I'm totally with the upset here. But at the same time, this is the one case where I'm like, the show really hasn't tried to force anything about this. Or even, you know, I think even one of the guys even came out and said, I don't think that's going to happen. 
so I feel like they've been setting up the carolers for what's gonna happen. Like it was never gonna be a ship different than the way they treated Rashon. Like it was always, oh, maybe like Pam and what you call it and Daryl and Carol, they were like, oh, I don't know if I see them like that. So at this point, four years later, they, you know, the upset is, it shouldn't even be an upset. It, it should be a foregone conclusion. But whatever, I, again, I haven't watched the show and I'm not watching just to see that happen. But it'll be interesting when I am doing the rewatch that they are doing something with Daryl other than making him emo or whatever the case may be. Uh, moving along, they are doing a Picard series because Star Wars or Star Trek is in right now and I'm still upset. Uh-uh. I wanted Black Ops Star Trek. Y'all can have that shit <laughs> that y'all got doing right now. I was and I really was happy for Sonequa Martin Martin Green because I love her so much she's an amazing actress and I don't even think it was a bad show it's just this cookie cutter shit they're doing right now uh-uh. yeah y'all can have that and then when it starts failing in the fucking ratings don't come at me <laughs> do not because <laughs> eventually people are gonna be like oh I, this is not what I thought all them new that fresh blood guess what it was fresh that's the part that they don't understand and you need to have something when you're gonna become a series like this it, it's it is what it is whatever i'm not even gonna whine about it it's the same people that's watching the uh fucking one with uh the dude from family guy y'all watching that same damn series that's the exact uh i don't know why it bothers me it shouldn't anyways they're coming out with that just to make another rip off of the same thing we'll see how it does I don't know if you want to base your platform on that CBS, but why not? Why the hell not? And we found out that Game of Thrones, now this I am excited about, that the Battle of Winterfell is like supposed to be the most epic, longest battle ever recorded on TV or movie. I don't know. It's going to break records and I'm so here for that. Last but not least, The Flash returns tonight for that uh, Gorilla Grodd slash king shark episode it's all up in the the news so it's not like this is a secret <laughs> however i will say it's it's the theme of returning bad people and trying to make them see good in it i'm i'm totally down for this fight the fact that they haven't shown it by ruining it <laughs> is a good thing i'm glad they were able to hold their water because i was gonna be mad and then they decided to just drop that shit about Godspeed. And we'll talk about that when we do The Flash. So on to this episode. We start out with Amy casually reading on the couch from last episode. Because we ended with Fanny knocking on her door like, what's up, girl? Because I totally need you right now. <laughs> My 13th, 14th, and 15th all decided to fuck up. Uh, not 13th and 14th. Yeah, no, because she would have been 13th and then i think elizabeth would have been 14th so he's like yeah so my other two folks didn't work out and i need to totally get you but she ain't about that noise she ready she reading her book giving him the silent treatment and fanny is like are we gonna just do this because it's not cool he wants to know how she did what she did by making the house he's like i could even smell the whiff of what did he say i don't know it sounded racist when he said <laughs> like canola oil or some shit and she he says that she says i don't want your help because he wants to help and he still doesn't know how she's as powerful as she is i thought that all of them could be able to make up their own fucking world right so why is he seemingly shocked or because it's because she hasn't turned fully yet that she shouldn't be able to do that like she has access to her powers however her powers don't necessarily coincide with her turning into a viral right and she says that i have the agent <laughs> and fanny's like um well he ain't here right now <laughs> basically and she's like well carter told me not to basically listen to you fanny does know that carter has been visiting like oh yeah i know you heard that from carter girl <laughs> and i'm just like amy hold your cards close though you don't want to tell this man too much and i understand because she's like she wants to know why she shouldn't be trusted or why she's trying to help her and 
it's better to confront someone who might have some answers and hear what they're gonna say and judge and you know judge the words for yourself which is exactly what she does like i need information that no one else can provide me but at the same time i don't trust you and i like that she maintains that the entire episode that she don't swallow the kool-aid she knows that she's special and that she's different and that fanning is going to try to hurt her fanning's like no that's not true at all i'm not gonna try to hurt you and i'm like remember winston amy <laughs> like because i'm pretty sure she remembers winston but he does say that he was not nice to carter when he was about to turn because he had to get him through that and unfortunately that's probably what caused the bad relationship between them and i can kind of it felt like he that was an honest but dishonest answer because he hasn't really like been up on carter like a hey, dude <laughs> he's kind of just been like you know i got you you turned you're my reluctant 11th as he calls him it is what it is what you do with your life i don't give a fuck <laughs> i just need you to turn so he tells her that you're gonna go through the change things are gonna get shitty the end is near my dear and she says i don't do riddles dude just tell me what the fuck you mean <laughs> and that does get him to ch chuckle and he says that she's amazing and he just wants to be her friend and we all know that he was going to change his tactics when he was dealing with amy because coming off the way he came off to carter just would not have worked and of course he's going it's a child you're not gonna come up to her like you're a beast and again i'm not even sure how much i'm supposed to take fanny seriously as a beast because it seems like he just wants what he wants and then for the most part he don't really care about what happens to his children we flash to security and clark on the elevator they want to know what's going on it's two blacks <laughs> black folks which is funny because they ain't happy when clark's like the girl is sick i'm like she has a name carter but i get it he's trying to you know distance himself and we see that amy is on a gurney she has been changed out of her clothes who changed her and put her in some sweatpants which i like to call aka prison garb and <laughs> tells sykes who's freaking out that she's about to go down to 4b because she's clearly turning and richards is definitely feeling some kind of way as babcock joins him and she's like you know your only option is me and i wondered if she was trying to turn him like into a vampire is that what they're gonna do like everyone gets one as they bring up like this was the interesting things which is the world building which i feel like they've kind of neglected a great deal in this season is what is going on with the vampires and that it's eight episodes in and we don't even really know why he needs 12 we don't know what the extent of their powers are we don't know too much and i don't want to and i feel like we should have been knowing this there are too many damn scientists in that lab to not have written down some things that what's the plan you know fucking torture fucking i'm not even down for torture but it seems like if you point a gun to lawrence's face he'll give up some answers why was he just in a cell why was he not being questioned oh my dude uh totally does not look enticed by babcock's offer like hey i'm letting you know we're this is about to come to an end you need to jump on this train with me and sykes is totally saying that it's she's a child she should not be on 4b and she should have been informed gilder reminds her correctly that he's in charge and is equally disappointed that amy turned i thought she was going to be our savior of this project but no unfortunately she needs to go down by the animals like the rest of them and sykes says that ever since liz has died she's been working on a treatment and he tells her aren't you sick and playing with people's lives and i was like damn why you had to tell her like that but at the same time are you the right one to be telling her like that <laughs> i'm sorry you're talking about you know saving project noah you're not even mad that this is a child that got messed up i mean if anything yeah you should be let, it, that's not about fucking with people's lives at this point it's trying to fix the mistake that you made and he's just all types of hypocrisy trying to make her feel bad for what she's done in the past 
and being a part of this like we already rehashed that out last episode that they know they fucked up I don't need to hear it every episode and I thought they were going to and I think they are trying to go somewhere with this and I, I don't know if I like no I don't like where they're going <laughs> he totally wants to weaponize this and he has a, the audacity to tell her oh don't try to cure people because I really just need this to mutate to something I can use uh, he tells her you should remember your colleagues that died and poor Elizabeth Lear really my dude have you even found anyone that mentioned the fucking janitor that's what I was saying in my notes because they threw it out there in a very dumbass casual line that apparently Lear did tell everyone about Lawrence infecting Elizabeth however they just had this dude up in a cell again he was not questioned he was uh. Gilder then announces that he is rebooting Project Noah to what exactly and why can't she still find the cure for Amy I don't understand if you're rebooting Project Noah for the same exact reason which is to find a cure why wouldn't the person who knows the most be involved and all this judgment coming from the dude who's trying to exploit exploit them is, is again still ridiculous he gets on the elevator rides down and Sykes looks helplessly at um Clark <laughs> like I don't know what to do and I wondered at this moment if she knew that the wall gas were on property and we find out that uh she is gonna find that out <laughs> And I, he tells her when she gets in the elevator too, like, this just looks so terrible for you, Nicole. And I'm like, so they're really just going to put all of this shit on a black woman? <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but wasn't Fanning already infected because him and his other white friend was given money by the government to go to this place? And then once they found out what Fanning was, brought him back to the lab, all she was brought in to do was address the problem after the fact and then they're experimenting on people for the most part like i get everyone's like oh people have rights and all this i told i'm totally for that but at the same time i think people are a forgetting that they were for the most part given a decision to make death or <laughs> be a part of this experiment yes i didn't tell you all of the shit like criteria of what we were doing but you knew you were being experimented on so you knew there were consequences i don't there is some responsibility or culpability on the other parties uh in that i feel like everyone's kind of ignoring and maybe it just wasn't that way in the books and they're ignoring that from the books because i can't i can't understand why people are like oh well you know they're totally justified for what how they're feeling right now yes and no yes i did not wish to be turned into a vampire but at the same time no <laughs> you know because I had some type of stay I could have stayed in my jail cell and they would have moved on to the next one right and all they did was sell them and there's no one in any of these cages that don't know the hustle right and as well they're all people who are bad people this is why again why you don't experiment on bad people because if shit go wrong then of course they're going to get out and be the worst kind of people but it's also the reason why you do experiment on people that society in has condemned to death and i think as much as we don't want to be good people and address the moral issue there it's gray it's not as black and white as people are meaning it to and i don't agree with the sykes hate of what she did yes she did what she did but she thought she had her reasons and yeah that does not uh make her blameless and the character's not acting like she should be blameless she's like no let me try to do what i can to fix this no matter what is going to happen to my career i'm more worried about what's happening to these patients and that's more than what gilder or the dod or the fucking government has done for them and again please not forget our history everything we have now came from someone's sacrifice and you cannot call yourself a hypocrite just because you weren't personally involved you're still wreaking the benefits and i don't see you out there picketing so i'm just gonna put that out there on how i feel about the matter because i feel like there is a lot of you know 
at this point in the game. Like for in the beginning, yes, look at Sykes and Lyra as, ooh, y'all don't know what y'all do. But getting to know the characters, we know they're not Gilder. We're, they're not people that are just out to hurt other people and that should be taken into consideration. I think that Babcock was right, that you're the worst kind of person because you really thought at the beginning that you were trying to help. So yes, there is some justifiable anger there, but like like she said, you still signed the fuck up for this. And then you wanted to get out, unfortunately, after the fact, and that's just not how this works. <laughs> that's not how that works. And I think if it was up to Sykes, she would have just let them go or killed the ones that uh, could not be saved. <laughs> so again, the fact that they're putting all this on the black woman pisses me the fuck off because this all started with a very white government a very white uh doctor trying to save his wife and a very white patient who became the first lab rat in which they extracted their blood too late not realizing exactly what they had going for them so you know people fuck up I'm not saying that they shouldn't go to jail i'm not saying um i'm just i guess i'm just not i'm just saying don't judge her i don't know what i'm saying <laughs> maybe because i just really like sykes so i just feel the need so gilder meets with martinez and i'm like am i supposed to care about this dude it's at the fourth hour ninth hour they about to get the fuck out why do i care about this martinez but he says that he is going to make him head of security and i was like wait a minute didn't you say that you were going to use or make clark head of security <laughs> last episode when did you change your mind about clark martinez points out that you know stop calling them shit because they were actually close with the girl and my thing is if they were close with the girl what do you think gilder's about to do this is why I'm like, uh, the difference between Gilder and people like Sykes and Lear, they'll test it trying to do the best, but at the same time, <laughs> they wouldn't have went for a second child. Gilder is totally going to go for a second kid. You know he is. If he had gotten control of Project Noah, he says, they don't give you six points for getting the ball to the two yard lane. And I was like, you're such an ass. Then he fixes his tie and announces to everyone that they're basically fired and phrases it as no you're relieved of duty but he has authorized bonuses for everyone and that this is their last day they they can party but do it off duty and i'm like you know there's vampires downstairs you were in the thick of it dude you know more than they do and yet you're telling them oh no go have some get some liquor in you you good it's fine it's totally fine uh the plan though uh the play on this though was spectacular it's the only thing that really made the episode in my opinion richards approaches gilder like the fuck dude when did i when was i getting fired like Sykes already knew she had her pink slips but again richards totally was in the clear for the most part <laughs> and he, he went back to back with gilder and the vampires they bonded and he says well you know blame it what you want uh, cabin Fe he still calls it um not cabin fever but shit i forgot he still thinks it's just something that was wrong with the with the people like you guys have just failed because you've been here too long and i'm like are you stupid i mean are you really that stupid and clark tells him look they are planning something because my fucking girl <laughs> because this vampire keeps telling me this and he's like i don't care i'm not wasting this money because corporate greed knows no bounds and i'm thinking what about the flu that was supposed to hit the u.s killing millions in like two months have we forgotten about that is that not on the agenda anymore N nothing's been brought up about that sykes tells richards that they need to make the antiviral work and they need to get amy out of there and I'm like, ooh, surrogate parents to the rescue. But is he going to tell her about the wall gas being on campus? And can we not talk about espionage in broad daylight in the middle of the room surrounded by your peers? That's all I'm asking. Gilder has removed his access. Damn, that was quick. And I don't even know why Clark was surprised. But um, 
Richards wants to know how long till Amy turns and there's no answer to that <laughs> because we know we don't need a deadline shit we don't need hours to work on because then we have to actually watch the clock that's too much for the audience Fanning is still working on Amy he's like oh that's a nice book it's very good <laughs> a wrinkle of time and he tries to reach for it and she's like don't and she has a uh, black girl hood all the way down because her side eyes can cut you okay you best believe he backed off all the like her as an adult be would be hilarious because she'd be like she'd be no uh fanny would be no match with her she'd look at him side eye and he'd go flying across the room amy tells him that she wants the agent and this is when he says that well little girl he ain't here i'm just trying to get to know you i'm asking you some questions and she's like i'm not joining your little family keep on talking about how you know we talk to each other and how we're friends i don't fucking care about y'all he tells her that well you are still changing and eventually it's gonna get st scary and if you need to talk to someone you know i'll come a knocking and she tells him get the fuck out <laughs> like can you just leave my house that's all i want to, you to do he's not stupid though because he totally leaves when he when she asks him to and that's what you do when you're building up trust with someone amy wakes in 4b and they got this little girl in cuffs <laughs> This, this is not okay. I was not happy with that. I was like, um, so everyone else turned and they didn't have cuffs on. At least I don't recall. <laughs> and it really got irritating when I turned around and you saw Fanny just staring at her. <laughs> he ain't got no cuffs on. And you see Babcock, they're actually virals and she just turning. Damn, y'all couldn't have left her turning in there? What was she gonna do? She is no different than the other folks. Why did we have to put this girl in whatever? Anthony finally, like, Anthony, where the fuck you been at? This whole time. He finally visits Fanny. And he totally looks like he's in pain. Because he just has this whole face of suffering on him. Because he's probably not eating like he should. I thought Anthony was, like, out in the woods and some shit. They took entirely too long because maybe they didn't want to explain how the fuck they got him in that cage because we saw that he was in the cage if you would have asked me two episodes ago where the hell carter was i was gonna say hiding somewhere in the woods uh he got him a place in a coffin somewhere i know he's in the fucking cages <laughs> but he tells him to stay away from the kid fanny is like you really gonna try to intimidate me right now and he tells her or tells him that she's better off dead like don't work on her come on and fanning head bunts him <laughs> i don't know why i thought that was funny but it was so casual because <laughs> they don't look like he looks like an old man to carter's very young very viral young man and <laughs> he's just straight up out of nowhere head butts him and carter barely even reacts other than the fact that his nose bleeds and he's like, look, this shit ain't on me. I didn't put her in this cage. I'm not the one that put the virus in her system. And again, back it with this shit of blaming the doctors. And I'm like, this is overkill this episode. Because it felt like to me, the show was saying, well, whatever happens, it's totally the doctor's fault. In a sense, yes. But it feels like they're saying, well, don't feel bad for say like Babcock because you know they did this to her and that was the whole theme this episode they did this to her so we should root for them no <laughs> just because someone did something to you doesn't mean you get to kill the entire human race fuck that <laughs> how do we jump from like even personal vengeance i would have been down with the, but the whole taking over the world shit that's where you lost me that's where we go the, the doctors can't be blamed for that that's called your own uh megalomania <laughs> anyway carter is like she's not gonna be the number 12 and he's like look my number reluctant 11 uh you ain't gotta be like me and she ain't gotta be like me she just gotta fucking turn so that we can get the fuck out of here <laughs> because if she doesn't we ain't and i know your ass want to be free because a you're black <laughs> and two i know you ain't happy being up in this cage stop it she's one of us just get her to be on our side 
Um, and this is what I wrote in my notes. So am I to believe Connor is in a cell? Because I haven't seen it. <laughs> and he says, Fanny, that is, that all I care about what the fuck y'all do is feed. So I'm guessing them feeding gives him power. Is that it? And that's how he has ordered the world. For you to feed and for Amy to feed just once. And that's it. So that to me gives me a little bit more insight on the fact of how it works. So it's not only that you have to embrace him. You also have to feed. And then you're in his family or under something that he needs for control. Don't know why, but that's what he needs. Then he says, now wipe your nose and let me grieve. Why would you pick this guy? He's the worst. I think I might actually like family. <laughs> As a bad, because he just he, he seems very casual as a bad guy. He's like, yeah, I want to take over the fucking world, but you know, I still got my emotions. I'm still grieving right now. My boo just died. <laughs> Despite her not choosing me. <laughs> Why don't he just conjure, conjure up an image of her and just live with him in his fake heaven? And there's another thing I, I was thinking about this whole Project Noah. And we'll get there when we get there. Sykes, Lila, Wogas, and Clark just jump Gilder. He come around the corner. He's like, what are you doing here? <laughs> and then Wogas puts a gun to his head and says, because Brad is sick, dummy. <laughs> Not Brad, because Amy is sick, asshole. <laughs> And I was thinking, oh, Martinez, you're up. This is the only reason you were cast to probably help out in the situation. Boy, was I wrong. And honestly, Gilda should have seen this shit coming. Come on now. And where the hell is Lear? I'm sorry. This is not the time for you to be taking bereavement. Get your ass back in here and solve this problem. And he says the dumbest line I've ever heard in my entire life. He says, I miss the old days when you were hung for treason, sir. Shut the fuck up. That's first. Second, those days were times when you weren't even a twinkle in anyone's eye, crotch, uh, on on the radar at all. And that is the most Trump statement Fox has made on this entire show. (laughs) Like, what the hell? Who says that? Who says that? Like, oh no, I wish the good old days when we hung people. What the fuck? What? You're in the wrong country. Go to one of the third war countries where democracy isn't a thing. Then those are the... Ugh. Anyway, Clark ain't going down with the rest of them. He's the lookout <laughs> and apparently the sole soldier up here. <laughs> Clark in this episode, when he was in the present, I was loving Clark. Again, I don't hate his character, but the flashbacks are so unnecessary. And the shit with Shauna is just... Ugh. Anyway, I was thinking this was going to be a, a convenient for him because he's going to be alone and Chala's going to manipulate him. And he tells them to keep his eyes out on all of them. Brad, that is, not just on the monitors. Like, keep your physical eyeballs on all the mofos down there because they up to something. I'm telling you. I know. Then we get a flashback four months later. Here we go. Sykes is talking to Richards on the walkie about tracking a very escaped Shauna who can't run for shit girl get on your running skill like why is she running like that they must have covered this whole event up because no one knows about it and she's like maybe I should bring back up and he's like no I got it I can handle it and Shauna is trying to escape and this is when we find out how big project Noah is that the whole place is surrounded by a 12 foot razor wire fence it has pressure pad sensors. There are snipers on any, on all the lookouts. Basically, there's no way out of this bitch. It's totally fortified. And that is where I went back to the line that Shauna said. And uh, I want to know what you taste like. That I want your lab. And I kept thinking, why would the fuck would they want the lab? <laughs> what significance would that be? And I get it now. I think they want the post because it's a good fortification you know you got your castle when people are coming after you because eventually someone's gotta know about this right well they knocked out the fucking communication so there's that uh they plan on taking over everything and then maybe because if you're gonna take over the world you can't just 
Like, I don't know where the show is going with the taking over the world. Like, are we going to go straight? Hey, we're going to pretend that we're, you know, on the up and up by using these human um, guinea pigs and then ease our way in the government and then control. I don't want to see that. Just bite everybody and turn them to vampires. (laughs) I don't want to get down to the political nitty gritty on how they can take over the world. That no. That's not this type of show and you're not going to have that type of viewership. We want to see shit going down. People shooting at each other. Dangerous situations. Great speeches of how I love you. And that's it. You ain't, you ain't got to make it all that complicated. It's vampires. We, 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 it don't need to be sophisticated vampire taking over the world. <laughs> if that's in the plans, please scrap them, Fox. And he says, come on, let's go grab a bite to eat. Um so that he can basically get her to come back and I was like oh this is exactly what I didn't want to see the fact that Nicole's the bad guy now so Clark has the reasons for betraying her so transparently Hollywood bullshit is how I was feeling I I, again I've said my feelings on the last video introducing him with a black love interest in which you just saw two episodes he went after right then then starting them in a relationship i don't know if it was before or after i don't with this scene i will give them that maybe after he but it still doesn't it's a terrible look and it's sad because even if they don't know they should especially after it could be crane i mean not it could be crane i mean that's who she really <laughs> that that's her otp that's where she would have eventually gone but especially after that debacle you know that there is a part of your fandom fox that really looks at how you treat african-american characters in particular dark african-american characters that can rub the fans the wrong way so why introduce this interracial relationship he ain't the cutest so if they were to break up i'm not crying but you still introduce this relationship as something solid, as something real. You've been showing us that this entire season. And then you introduce this pretty, blonde, blue-eyed, woe is me. Oh, I'm just, you know, quirky and manipulative, but sweet and kind. And, you know, I'm all these things that you really want to root for, you know, because there's the lilies out there that totally fall. That's exactly what they are. And everything could be cleaned away because I was molested as a child for all the bad things I do. And then uh, put the, you know, character like Clark, 1A as if he's a prize. Let's, because <laughs> let's face fact, Nicole and Babcock are way far above what Clark is rolling with. <laughs> that he would get any woman is a little asinine. I love Clark's hair. His hair is the best thing going for him and him wearing all black but yeah it's then to set that up and then make it seem as if the black woman is somehow it makes that's what exactly they're implying like the black woman is somehow less than not the prize not the one to be desired that is an ill taste and it's done too many times that they would actually put that front and center in this episode was really just a bad taste in my mouth this whole thing left a bad taste in my mouth because like i said plenty of times before i like all three of these characters and it's so unnecessary because you didn't have to go this route you just didn't you could have just left him single and then let him work this out with this chick uh we did not need a sykes and um clark relationship it did nothing for either character other than to have a relationship out there and i think that i don't know if it was used as a tactic to bring in those viewers that are invested in interracial relationships or try to you know say hey we're not racist at all because we totally made an interracial relationship but like i said walking dead tried to pull that shit that's the only one who ever said that was a real relationship was rashon and i know someone else said they didn't know what rashon is and i was like oh Lord, you got to go back man i think it was shion girl if nothing else just go back and get the youtube videos <laughs> of rick and michonne from season three until uh about now just all their their scenes that is the best to me interracial relationship 
that was uh, a slow burn but gave value to both characters just something done right and if it's not done right just don't do it at all I almost feel like anyway getting off that because y'all know how I feel about it he realizes someone has clearance they shouldn't because he comes out of this flashback and that's when he realized that Lawrence is on the loose he's like what the fuck and at gunpoint <laughs> um Brad locks up Gilder down in 4B and puts him in the conference room with the other guards Sykes is able to get in her lab and start looking at the DNA panels to get this antiviral kill working and Lila is looking at the vitals of Amy and she's stable for now and then she says Sykes that is I will show you how to make the antiviral shots and I was like no separation makes me think Sykes will die and again where the fuck is Lear he should totally be in on this shit you need to be up to date he on the campus right (laughs) call him you got a walkie it to me it felt like the um that Lear was kind of in this show but not really (laughs) like I feel like he was one of those actors who were like we're gonna pay you to be a part of this first series because you're well known however we're not gonna put you in every episode because you're totally not committed and this shit might not even pop off to season two anyway um we go back to Amy and Walgas he finally we all we finally get our reunion we've been waiting for and he's like hey sweetheart wake up and I'm like my emotions and Amy finally wakes up and she's like you're here and he's like of course I'm here and she's like how the hell you get up in here though he's like Amy didn't I tell you I got skills and that he found her and I wanted him to just say I'm your father now child nothing will keep me from you (laughs) Amy doesn't want out of her restraints when Brad goes to take her out because she thinks that she's dangerous and I'm like Lord Fanny already got in your head out of the fucking blue we see Lacey getting picked up by some tow truck some driver is it not a tow truck driver a a semi-truck driver and I'm thinking how the hell did she get separated from Lila is anyone's guess was she like I'm gonna hang out in the nunnery and restock on supplies and guns and I get back with you the fact that we had no mention between this with Lila is so infuriating like I don't even think he's did he I think she did say Lacey's okay <laughs> like she survived <laughs> last episode when they were talking right I didn't miss that and then we found out La- Lacey is pretty much on her way to Project Noah and we go back to Project Noah that is and they is partying they got the music on he totally said after your shift right and these mofos got beers in hand <laughs> Clark comes down the steps like the fuck but he goes over to some people who are trying to do their job and ask them to track Lawrence and they're like well he should be in his cell and that's when our first indication that he actually was locked the fuck up but he's just the sweep and there's he's like did I ask you all these questions just find this fucking motherfucker <laughs> and they see that Lawrence is rolling around with his mop bucket and his janitor uniform and it's too late because he's taking his I don't know how the fuck he he got yeah oh yeah oh yeah that's why (laughs) we know how he got out of the cell but he knocks out the communications and uh Clark runs in with his gun on him but it's he says too late and this is all on Lear because I'm mad because I feel like Lear should have taken him out but I guess if they locked him up they thought the situation was under control but whatever but uh he asked Clark like why the hell did you do that he's like I did what Fanny told me to do (laughs) this is part of their plans to take over the world and what did Shauna tell you to do because everyone knows that he's Shauna's bitch or at least the indication that he's Shauna's bitch and again i didn't know at this part i'm just like yep clark is totally about to turn for some vampire poon and i'm disgusted we get another flashback and i was thinking am i really supposed to care about this developing relationship you've got to be fucking kidding me (laughs) because they're having talks 
about uh we get a little bit background on clark which is the only thing i really wanted out of this conversation is the fact that his dad is a third precinct judge he's a federal judge so big deal because she pins him for like a senator someone who rose out rose up as a senator's daughter or whatever or senator's son and that he's kind of on the straight and narrow they're flirting obviously Again, I don't know if this was before Nicole, after Nicole. If it was before Nicole, I ain't, I ain't gonna say much shit about it because it is what it is. However, making it feel like he, he, like he, she was first and Nicole second is still, again, not a good look. You could have just done it better, <laughs> or just not made him a couple. Damn, that would have been so much easier. Then we would never be having this conversation right now. And I'm trying so hard not to be angry. Sykes is um trying to stop the virus before it hits the limbic brain as she's explaining to lila like we can get the virus to attack certain things and if we can not get it to the limbic brain amy will still have her powers but she won't turn into an actual viral and see gilder if she accomplished this shit she would totally be promoted and you would be you would be trying to get amy to work for her i I still don't understand why this was a bad idea for gilder (laughs) because it totally would have been something that he should have wanted to happen (laughs) like i just don't he wants one that works for him right wouldn't he want the best case scenario to try to at least be saved especially after trying to bond with her even if it was fake bonding amy goes back to fanny and he's like oh you came back she's of course she came back she wants fucking answers she's like i'm sick i don't feel well and i'm feeling everyone's feelings around me and what is that gonna stop and he and she says that she can feel that the agent is scared and he tells him that we are actually cursed to feel too much so this babcock thing apparently is never going to go away thanks for that because that's going to be her journey after you could tell that's gonna be her viral journey staying with my humanity so i can be with my love clark fuck y'all anyway (laughs) even if sykes wasn't involved i totally was never gonna root for this relationship if it makes anyone feel any better (laughs) sykes involves makes it even more that it gives me the leverage to really hate it but i was never gonna root for this it it's so disproportionate is this girl like 20 clark feels like he's almost 40 jesus they need to stop with this young ass kid uh, women and these old ass men that ain't even good looking that ain't nobody spending their time on shit anyways he tells her it's not all bad though there is some good stuff and she's like what kind of good stuff but he makes her follow him to get that answer clark tells gilder <laughs> or ask gilder he comes back in the conference room puts a gun to him again this was what was cracking me up by clark because he was a one-man army this whole entire episode <laughs> and he was just straight up yanking folks he was I mean, he was throwing his gun around putting it around the people's head like i will kill you like there's no hesitation in me and he asked gilder why the fuck he gave lawrence access he's like what the fuck are you talking about i didn't give him access like why would i give him what after what he did to miss elizabeth lear why is he so concerned about miss lear like i feel like he really was <laughs> oh protecting your own and he says i would never have given him that access he's like well why did he have it he's supposed to be in a cell and that's when we know for a fact in the show that they totally know what he did and they tell it they totally did address it gilder can't even get in his own system because he asked him well fine overwrite this shit and he's like i can't because martina is asking me at my behest to reset everything and Clark wants to know where he can find this Martinez because he needs to chat with him with his gun. <laughs> and then the way he just willy nilly be manhandling folks when he grabbed fucking Lawrence. Because <laughs> right after, because first he was like, he had uh, Gilder by the shirt. And then he just grabbed Lawrence by the shirt, just starts manhandling him. And he says, I need your eye retina, or should I just take them out? And he's like, oh yeah, no, we should go. <laughs> I'm not going to be feeling sorry for Lawrence because he is from what I, I think that made it a reference that he's a, he's a pedophile, right? Oh, what is up with these nasty ass motherfuckers in this built? Why? Like I get, you need the shit ass people. Cause if you need to dispose of them, ain't nobody gonna miss them. That makes sense. But at the same time, like I said, unfortunately, 
I mean, in, in theory, it works. You got 50 armed guards versus the pedophiles we're using to be the janitors. What else they gonna do? Sit in a, in a, in a jail? <laughs> we gonna treat them like shit. And I had heard this, and I don't know anything about the book, so I'm sorry if this is a book spoiler, but it's not a huge big deal. But I do like how someone did inform me on how this is supposed to work and how it would have worked better in the show and how they're really not showing it in the show because they're pressed for time, whatever the case may be. But I think that this would have been so much more successful if they had done it like the book. So if you don't want to hear, skip like two minutes ahead. But apparently in the book, they are all separated. Like the no one knows that there are virals downstairs. Like that's not a thing. Like when people are having dreams and shit, we really don't know what the fuck that's coming from. And they are all in like the, the sweepers are all segregated in their area. They don't ever go to this side of the campus. The military's in one side. They don't ever go down to see the virals. No one knows about the virals except the doctors, right? So while all this shit is happening with this huge takeover, it's not so, it doesn't make the characters look as dumb as it does on the show. Like how the hell y'all not putting the shit together? In the book, they're not putting it together because they really don't know. They have no clue what Project Noah is really doing. They're not informed. Uh, they don't get the full extent of how bad this shit is. And then even when things are popping off, it gets covered up and no one knows. So everyone is more in the dark. So it makes more sense that shit would be happening and people would be unaware of it. Like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, this doesn't, it would not compute, right? I think that would have been way better because this just puts everyone in a dumbass light and I think that the show was trying to go for the indication like if no one had ever told me that I would not have went back and kind of saw where they were trying to make that that but they also fucked up because they had the janitor down there with the with the gosh ding on virals and that's that never happened from what I understand in the book like no one ever had any interactions with the virals the only got in your head so yeah <laughs> i wish they'd done that amy is um awake again and brad is still trying to untie her but she's like no didn't i say i do not want to hurt you and he rubs her back and lets her know i know you'd never hurt me and she's like i don't feel good she's burning the fuck up she's getting a huge fever and she loses her teeth <laughs> one of her tooths and i was like oh it's all bloody and she's like what does that mean and he hugs her and he's like it's going to be fine help me help me nigga no it is not bruh it's not about to be fine call socks or socks <laughs> call sykes nicole get her ass up in here hugging is cute but it's not helpful and uh y'all saw that other viral just staring at her right and i wrote in my notes when we gonna get to know uh the other virals or not we're not gonna get to know them and where the fuck is anthony because even if anthony was in the cage and i didn't see him this whole entire time because y'all ain't shit and y'all know that y'all cheap as hell didn't show him in that cage <laughs> and they can only pay him to be on set for so long <laughs> but uh even with him, why couldn't he have came to Amy in this time of need? Like, hey girl, I got you. <laughs> At all. Was it because, it didn't seem like Fanny was blocking him. Or is it because he's not that strong because he hasn't been eaten? Then eat for Amy, bruh. Eat for Amy. She needs you. All she needed was him to pop up one time and, and to know that, hey, I have someone on the other side of this that is, is going to help me. But Amy is out with Fanning in the woods and he shows her that being a viral isn't just the bad things because there's nature and you're outside. The fuck is that? You could have just showed me some chicken wings and a fucking ice cream. <laughs> Give me some. This is not selling me. <laughs> not at all. And she points out that Winston hurt people. And I like that Amy is smart enough to be like, I can talk to you like an adult and I can judge for myself how your words are uh impacting me and i like that she brings up winston like he you're trying to act like i don't know what just happened <laughs> i just watched him do what he did and it did not seem like it was nice or kind 
and he's she says i don't want to hurt the agent and he's like yeah but you don't have to because we all get to have one to keep for ourselves and he could be yours and i'm like jesus first and foremost do not proposition a 10 11 year old however she's supposed to be to kill someone who's her now or daddy figure <laughs> like hey do not have to kill all the humans you can totally have your special one to not be lonely for and i feel bad for babcock because she probably gonna get lonely as fuck after this because clark rejected her ass <laughs> i don't know if that's a full rejection or is that just gonna change in the end because something tells me that's gonna change in the end i don't know why but uh i don't like sykes being locked in i just don't and the fact that another black lady is on the way that means we we have permission to get rid of the other black lady for our quota i hate to say all this shit but y'all i hate anyone who has dealt with facts knows the deal it is proven that they treat shows that are a big deal with the african-american community but maybe not catching on with the other you know minorities or not minorities i should say and they cancel it they that's just what they do they put it out there to say hey we did it but at the same time they don't seem to in- invest a lot of their time or energy into it and um that's it but carter said uh she says carter said that she basically dishonest and fanny is like you came to see me <laughs> and i was like that um he tells her that she can enjoy the day instead instead of worry about what i'm up to and he manifests one of her old bikes and she looks right at him like is this a trick and i'm like yep it is don't take handies from a stranger girl he's like it's a bike i can't ruin that (laughs) but you use it i mean i have to give fanny his props where they're due he did a good job of getting her where she needed to be to accept uh him as her as her lord and savior he just didn't know she's special which is what everyone's been telling her all this time lila is meanwhile drawing blood from amy because they need to test her blood against the new antiviral they made or some shit science and she gives brad a pep talk because he ain't leaving amy's side (laughs) that's something that's something he's not going to do and she tells him that amy just needs to hold on for a little while and he's like she's burning up and he tells socks ask sykes is there anything to do about that and she's like unfortunately you know this gotta run its course okay by the way she lost a tooth and (laughs) sykes like okay fuck well the turn is is, it's happening there's there's you know the the shot is our only shot there's nothing else to be done i can't do nothing to get this fever down we can put her in a bath cold ass bath but we all saw this go down with carter i need to work focus my time on this damn cure back to this nonsense four months ago shauna is still this broken girl with the pretty face and all too quick with the dewy eyes and it makes me sick because she could be so much more and she can have this man is what i i put in my notes um i just wish sykes totally doesn't have to die for this man being dick whipped or that she has to be somehow sacrificed because the story can't go forward with clark and her if sykes still in the picture because she has to die because <laughs> it has to break him and then that's when he's going to jump on her her bandwagon right uh shauna wants them to run away together in the diner <laughs> she already setting this shit up after five minutes of conversation and here comes the backup and he's like well i had no choice and he tells she tells him you always have a choice and i'm like yeah guilt my ass you know damn well what she is and your dick wouldn't be involved if it was just about a feeling bad and not letting her go that's what i wrote in my notes because <laughs> i'm just trashing all over this and it's true i don't understand like if you made this about guilt i'd be fine i'd totally be fine with it but it's not and the fact that y'all are acting like lust is not involved he's like i care about you what the <laughs> after one day no Mm-mm. she didn't even give him his back so oh, stop let me stop anyways moving on martinez and his dudes have basically vanished because <laughs> clark can't find them 
Lawrence is all up in the business. He's like, didn't I tell you eyes forward? Because he's totally going to report to Fanning, right? And then the one guy's like, maybe he's part of the CIA. You know, they're like ghosts. They're, and that's when he sees Shauna, who's clearly waiting for Clark to do what we all know he's going to do. Drinking beers with the guys to say, you know, you can't avoid this, blah, blah, blah. Gilder gets manhandled again, and it's hilarious because Clark has finally figured this shit out. Now, this was the best part of the goddamn episode <laughs> was when he dragged him over, and he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's, he threw him down, and there was fucking Martinez, and he's a viral. <laughs> I died i was like oh now that shit was well done now that's how you take something like not showing the rest of the virals and and making it work for you because i fucking didn't even even for five seconds think that martinez was a viral (laughs) even though gilder totally was the only person that saw him it it, it never crossed my mind and he is sick gilder's like the (laughs) fuck he's like not only did you give this viral access to the entire fucking place (laughs) and the communications have been knocked out this man is a serial rapist (laughs) he's like do you have any idea what the fuck you've done and then leaves them there (laughs) oh he is aching in his soul he know he fucked he's like oh my god are you serious man when he turned around that was the best part of this entire series to be honest (laughs) other than amy and brad's relationship and sykes just being sykes (laughs) and um that's when i was like oh so they plan on taking over because i was like they got gilder and uh they plan on taking over then i hope this ain't going political again that was my big thing clark the the way he leaves him on the ground too he's like so funny gilder's just kind of like i don't know if he was crying throwing a tantrum uh he was wiggling though staring at his colossal fuck up (laughs) and he goes to brad in close quarters mind you they have conversations in private and he's like would you leave him over there he's like i'm giving him a moment to think about what he did (laughs) and it's moments like this that i love clark and clark tells brad that hey this is what's happening they're about to take over this whole shit <laughs> so brad's like okay what's the plan he's feeling like he's in dad mode but he's also an agent so i feel like he needs to also be in agent mode because he went and he did things that i did not expect him to do this episode and one of them was getting his ass out there with clark and figuring shit out because <laughs> there's just no way he should be in this like lila could have done that she could be uh i feel like his, his skills would have been you better utilized outside with Clark because we got to watch his ass too because we know he got the dreams about Babcock and Sykes knows it so mm. yeah and uh no because uh homeboy know it too because uh Paulson told him (laughs) so I I feel like he should totally be like nah Clark I ain't gonna leave you alone bruh and uh he says we can't kill them because they're Amy so Clark says he's got a better idea. He's going to gas him. He's going to put him to sleep. Like, shit. We don't need them watching us to see what the hell we're doing. And he's going to evacuate non-essential personnel and get a few people that he trusts. And I'm like, oh, no, Clark. Oh, my God. He's going to betray everyone because he thinks Amy will bring him up. Because <laughs> this is where my, the- my think it was all over the place on how Clark was and the reasons why Clark was going to betray everyone. Because I started to think, okay, Amy's gonna bring Brad into the fold and now they can be one big happy family and he's totally down with that so he's gonna agree (laughs) and I was just not okay with that idea either because I was like another rationalization for the young poon thirst but that didn't happen he gives Brad Gilder's badge which I'm glad he did because apparently they're gonna be separated is where I'm where I'm going with all this right and he um says you know just in case and i was wondering because he knew himself couldn't be trusted but it's a big deal because it's going to get him out of the campus and we knew that we know this is going to come to play in the season finale right 
Shauna tells, because uh, he gets on the elevator, and this is when they have their final, I don't know if this is their final confrontation, but she tells him that we almost got everything we need, uh, you helped me already, now come join us, and he's like, I haven't helped you do shit, he's like, you saved my life, you lied to Nicole about, uh, you know, not having the dreams, you shot Paulson, accurate, all accurate, <laughs> and he straight up just kisses this chick and i was like oh fuck here we go <laughs> i was so mad <laughs> because again your ass supposed to be in love with nicole right now or at least in a relationship with her oh this to me felt so much like betrayal but he does do something i didn't expect to do and he admits that yeah i do care about you you're right i cared about the girl that ran away i cared about the girl from texas because yeah he, he cares about her oh so much however your ass is a monster right now and i don't want you killing all these damn people you out of your damn i got common sense okay i'm not gonna want the world to be eaten and me being your bitch that's just not how this is gonna work <laughs> so it's a complicated win because nicole totally deserves better but at the same time it's just like uh-huh do we need to have him kissing all up on her and talk about how he cares about her when he's supposedly with someone else? Again, if they ended the fucking relationship two episodes ago, I might even have jumped on that bandwagon then. But no, no. Why are we doing this? Uh, and then when he went outside and they playing um, <laughs> in the common room, they playing some naughty by nature. I'm like, y'all can go fuck yourselves. I hate you, Fox. <laughs> and of course he rounds up the black folks because who else he gonna get that actually gives a fuck about Amy and breaking protocol <laughs> and he tells him that if you see someone who's not human kill them gray is in his restraints in the conference room and he gets him safe the fuck out i don't know if fanny was in his head or something giving him superhuman strength or just told him to ignore the pain get your ass out i don't know why the guards did not yell i know y'all are not privy to this and y'all been hearing what's going on so yeah make some noise anything to not let this dude casually walk out of the room with some bloody hands because he fucked himself up getting out of them cuffs and i was like oh shit he coming for sykes i'm not gonna be okay please take lila <laughs> i'm just not ready for sykes to die maybe because she's the only black woman on the show that i'm rooting for because lacy hasn't been around i'm sorry and now i even now lacy coming back i'm just like eh, eh. <laughs> she been gone too long girl just too long sykes gets uh the cure to work and that yes she let out was real and lawrence locks sykes in with the cure as she's putting it away and she sends lila out to grab some shit uh like gauze and shit because they're gonna inject amy and she's like no let me out and i was like thank god that means she'll live to inject her <laughs> selfish ass I was like, somebody got to let her ass out because she got to get this injection to Amy because I don't think they made all this uh, thing about this not turning her into a viral. Even though at the end it looks like she's turned into one, I think she's still turning and she's still fighting. But I don't think she's going to become one yet. I think this this uh, anti-viral is going to come into play. And Sykes has been working on fucking like five episodes now. So yeah this is gonna what and i hate to say it but this is what she's probably gonna die like after she gives her the injection then i can die so fucking clark can run off with fucking babcock because she's gonna be like i want to change for you clark and i really did love sykes and oh my god and, and, and yeah you missed me with that gray knocks lila out with a flashlight girl you didn't need to pause that long that man is too short y'all you could uh yeah men overtake one i don't know but uh he did have a weapon <laughs> i'll give him that he knocks her the fuck out i'm surprised he didn't kill her but he got better he got things to do and now I'm wondering now because <laughs> lila where is she like i don't know where the lab is in reference to where the virals are like is the lab out on the other side of the door where brad is right now and or is lila still on the ground unconscious where the virals are <laughs> and they're gonna use her to try to get to amy because they definitely gonna need amy because they can't whatever they want to do right now they ain't got their full potential because they don't have amy so gray takes something off the of gilder and we find out these are the keys that open all of the cages and 
Gilda, you should have listened. Because he's going to say, come on, son. Don't do this. You'll kill us all. <laughs> this is not the time. And Gray's like, look, I didn't, I didn't have a ch- I had a choice. Or I didn't have a choice. There's some shit he's trying to say. And I'm with Fanny now, basically. And you have Martinez. And you're not going to die because you're Martinez bitch now. <laughs> so that's something. Amy is with Fanny. And he's still serving the Kool-Aid, talking about, you know, all you gotta do is join me. You know, it's gonna be scary. You're gonna have to go through this dark tunnel. And on the other side of this tunnel, you're either gonna die or you're gonna come out and you're gonna be reborn and join me. So he sends her off on a little bike ride. Brad is like, okay, what about Amy? <laughs> Cause he reaches out to Sykes about the cure. He don't ask about his wifey once. And I laughed my ass off. He says Clark is, or Sykes says Clark is working on it because apparently they can still communicate via the walkie-talkies. And I'm like, sure, Jan. Clark's still upstairs thinking about (laughs) Babcock. (laughs) She tells him that with Liz and with Carter, it seemed that they had to make a choice, that there's nothing we can do on the outside, that Amy has to make this choice. And we all know that she ain't going to choose Fanny. And I'm like, I wouldn't be so sure about that. And that basically we need to prepare for the worst that she's going to die and i'm thinking brad do you think won't he get the hell out there do something break some heads bust some knives beat the shit out like i feel like with that's what it was infuriating me because <laughs> brad is up in the cage with this girl and here is uh gray casually walking around where the virals are he gets he didn't hear gilder and gray I'm like, what? Anyway, he don't do shit. He just sits the fuck back down. (laughs) And holds her hand and says, you can break your promise. And I love you, kid. And I'm like, are we even there yet? I don't care. My emotions were feeling it. But I did kind of feel it was a little nard. My bae uh, finally finding herself. She goes through this cage and she's looking at her choices, right? Go front or go back but she takes a moment to stop and she sit, lights a match that the match that her mom gave her i told y'all y'all shit that was gonna come back and she says what are we not gonna do panic so she takes a moment to think like i ain't gonna make this choice right now what the fuck am i you know he just he just <laughs> he just uh, walked me to this path what the fuck says i gotta go down this path right now um, i'm not even there yet i don't feel like you're there like how fucking like she was stable right so it's not like she was in Carter territory where she needed to make the choice right now. So she recalls her conversation with her mom that she is not a monster when she thinks she is because that's what she's wrestling with and that she is uh, the light. And she remembers what Brad told her that she's wicked smart, she's amazing and that she's special. And she knows that, you know what? Fuck it, I'm gonna fight. <laughs> And she gets back on her bike and she still starts to go back towards Fanny. And he's like, the fuck, kid? Don't do it. Don't do it. And then Gray opens up all the cages in the real world. And then he says, here we go. Why won't you die? I hope he dies this season. Like someone takes him out. I don't care if it's Woolgas. I don't care if it's Lila. I don't care if it's Amy. He don't need to survive the rest of this season, right? Not only is he a creepy pedophile, but he seems to be enjoying this shit. Like, every, like Paulson felt bad. He was like, I'd rather kill myself or jump on a plane or some shit than fall in. But he seems like he is enjoying the ride. So he needs to die. Wogass unlocks Amy's <laughs> restraints real quick. <laughs> when he sees them virals coming out, like, we got to fucking go. And there is Gilder still on the damn floor. <laughs> They must got plans for him because he's like, well, gas and well, gas very reluctantly drags his ass <laughs> uh, through to safety, through the double doors, pulls a gun out, waiting for someone to, you know, don't pull a gun out, run. The fuck you need like unclip this motherfucker and run. <laughs> why, why we need to sit here? And uh, Nicole is still stuck in the lab. And I was like, shit, is she again on their side or on the other side? I know she gonna die, but I guess she's gonna get one last brave heroic moment by giving her this cure. I'm so sad. I really did not want Sykes to die. (laughs) 
I want Clark to die just cause, but he's not going to. I want um, the one dude to die. Lila's gotta die because he ain't even, like I said, he ain't even mentioned that girl's name. <laughs> like she came to support him. Like I feel like they wrapped up their story last episode and now she's just fodder. Total and utter fodder. She, she's knocked out in the middle <laughs> of a lab. She's probably gonna help in some way, but she's probably gonna sacrifice herself for Amy and Brad because she's like I said, Brad stuck to Amy's side and didn't move. He's like, fuck, who, 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 who is Lila? I don't know that person. <laughs> and was Brad okay with her turning into a viral? I feel like he was saying it's okay to let go and break your promise. Like, you don't leave me, I don't leave you. Like, you can go ahead and leave me and become a viral. <laughs> because I'd rather take care of you than have you die. And... Amy turns around to the camera panicking and her eyes turn and of course we're like what does that mean and of course we all know that's that she's turning and that 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 was still happening <laughs> it did not happen just because she got her ass up out of the room she just chose not to make the choice at that moment and to hold on a little bit longer so that's where the finale is going to be we're on lockdown we're out of communication so they can't call her back up and it's just going to be Wolgas, Clark, and a handful of guards against all these virals, and we don't know who else the fuck has been compromised. <laughs> but a lot of people's about to die. I don't know what Carter's gonna do either. He out, they finally showed him in his cage being let the fuck out. And I don't know what he's he's gonna do to try to help them, because I feel like he should. And I guess ba ba uh, Babcock did take it real hard when Clark rejected her. Like she felt she looked like that hurt because <laughs> he did tell her like are you fucking serious like do you know have you seen yourself you're not that person anymore that you were you're now someone else and i'm like but she hasn't done anything really too bad other than kill that asshole guard so they've given her plenty of room to say oh, okay i'm changing my mind and the fact that she's somewhat of a likable character you would go there with her but they could easily just say she could brush out her last bit of humanity like um fanny had to do with liz and be like well fuck everyone now i'm gonna really turn evil so one or the other but that could be her revenge against clark i'm gonna kill sykes then and i don't know one or the other or she could kill clark for so I, I don't know but i still feel like sykes is gonna die because that's just what fox do if you want to send feedback for the season finale two hours next week you can send that to blackgirlcouch at gmail.com you can find this podcast on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, and Podbean at Black Girl Couch Reviews. Remember to like, subscribe, follow, all that good jazz. Next is Expanse. Until then, peace.